where they're located. Uh, do they have a room where someone's monitoring them? And uh, how much time is someone monitoring these uh, uh, the monitors to see what's going on and not going on? Right. To that and what they would cost? Well, we can discuss the cameras and their usage. I would like Gabriella, she has more background on it. But in terms of monetary costs and anything, because it is directly from the power alloy that we're not going to The funds are frozen. Right. We, I would try, I would just say discussing, discuss how the cameras are used in the classroom setting, keep it in that frame of thought. Yeah, whether they're black and white, uh, the quality of the cameras, the life expectancy. Mm -hmm. Okay, are we at number five? Right. Okay, so El Cerino, uh, mm -hmm. middle school, mm -hmm. uh, when the jungle is that spoken into, I'm going to say that's in November, October, November. Uh, and so El Cerino Middle School came to us, uh, and, uh, or actually came to me and just said that I wanted to get into it. Uh, the kinds of cameras that were broken into are just regular digital cameras, they're not very expensive. They're, uh, they, the students use them for educational purposes. They also use them to create their years of the year. Uh, are there handheld cameras? Yeah, they no, they're handheld cameras. They're handheld cameras. Oh. The students use them, and they also use them during their computer class when they learn about uh, graphic arts. Really? So they really use the cameras to create proper presentation for what grades are you doing? Um, uh, what also happens is that the 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 classes are broken into. Uh, it was really obvious that that they were whoever sold them they were just being mysterious because a lot, quite a bit of the uh, material was found, but it was broken upon investigation. Okay. Uh, so they're broken into the classroom. Okay. Uh, they're broken into the classroom. Okay. 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 Like a broken, or it's found by hikers, it's pretty bad. Are they colored? I think, it, yeah, it is outrageous. It's ridiculous. You think that they'd be this smart enough to yeah. sell it or pawn it, but that wasn't the case. So, El Serino, as soon as the funds are, out, are available, we would like to request the education committee for uh, not all the cameras, but some of the cameras. Uh, recently, um, they've been. They were, um, we don't just want to ask them in, but they're also uh, working hard to uh, bring in their own funding. I, I donated a, a clip to them, uh, and they sold tickets to, to raffle this quilt, and they, I think they conjured up about $500. So they're, they're not just kind of waiting to see if people will give them a handout, but... Are they there being color cameras? Yes, so, well, digital cameras. Okay. So, but because we can't, we still can't move stuff. Um, let me make a mini. Why am I here? I was like, why am I here? Well, there's other issues. Uh -huh. There's other issues for us to take some funding, but, uh, but, uh, just for the sake of disclosure, there was a, a memo sent out by Empower LA. These are the that are proposing an outstanding issue with business cards way back in 2011. Are you serious? Yes, yes, and we also need to get in our, re our reconciliation form for the month of December and January. The special meeting that's called for Wednesday, we're hopefully we'll take care of that. I know there's also a lot of having that done the same night as the training that's going to be done by Empower LA. It's going to share to have you a teachable moment as part of the fiscal training. Uh, but that is, that's still... Still not uh, right now, but that's the current issue, and uh, it's frustrating. I'll leave it at that. Um, right, it's very frustrating. But uh, we will hopefully get things resolved by the end of the week. Who, who are the former members that are here? Well, we, for the sake of roll call, uh, all three committee members are here. Uh, the chairperson and myself, uh, the director representative, the director of the mayor, and the state representative. Yeah. Okay. Whoever's here in the meeting, yeah. Yeah. Where they are. There, is, uh, there is a, actually, I, Mr. Chavez, we got the clipboard here. If you can go ahead and uh, sign in here, there's a sign in sheet. 
So that way, the title team gets incorporated into the record. So what time is it officially started? I started at 10. Okay, let me move on here um, to item number uh, we item number six, which is the review and resolution approving report on joint town hall meeting regarding the the November twenty November twenty eleven letter on on concern relating to zoning issues at the academic and municipal public charge for the highest surprise. Um, for the board members here, last week the, the Land Use Committee, which was the party to that town hall meeting, uh, took up this issue at, a, at this meeting and, and discussed the, the issues involved and, and also discussed the up-to-date information vis-a-vis that was provided by the, the build, Department of Building and Safety. Okay. Okay. Um, during our November meeting, Gabriella and I were here, but in the spirit of openness and disclosure and transparency, two of us were sitting here by ourselves discussing the agenda. Legally, we had forum, but we felt it wasn't right just to have two members sitting at a table like this discussing a very sensitive community issue. That's why we basically did was we're replicating the November agenda now, so all the board members are present again. And it's just a, it's just a standard of making sure that all the board members are present and that there is an adequate time to be committed to partake in tonight's meeting as we give, as we give comments. Okay? Now, the most important, at the time period when we had the town hall meeting, numerous community members, I'll say we were around 15, around off number, attended the meeting. It was actually kind of equally split of people pulled. Um, representing the charter school and people representing the, the business interests that had concerns about the zoning improprieties in their mind that were alluded to in a, a 20, November 2011 letter to Councilman of Weezard, uh, which is here. Okay? And, and so the community had, it, had a, a process of, of having a public comment. Okay, four members were allowed for a question and answer period, and the information was taken back to committee for discussion. The most important documentation that can come out of that, that those meetings was the fact that that the Department of, of Building and Safety sent a letter to one of the business providers, left it on the letter, okay, and basically said that under California State Educational Code, LAUSD would have the right to assert itself in a jurisdictional manner revolving these only issues of the local school. It could be a regular public school, it could be a charter school. But if the school district felt compelled, was compelled to assert its authority, they would have to apply to give a notice to the Department of Building and Safety asserting that, that, that a jurisdictional well, a prerogative as, as stated under California law. Building and Safety Department could find no documentation that LAUSD, as the overseer of the charter school, ever applied for, for a jurisdictional control over the zoning issues involving that, that school location. Thus, the ramifications are is that the Department of Building and Safety, any sort of you know, zoning stuff is not a privy, privy to the Department of Building and Safety. Thus, you can make the argument that the school is operating out of compliance with local zoning laws. Okay, so that is stated here in the letter, and that was sent to business owners. One of the one of the concerns expressed in that meeting was the fact that uh, we have you know issues involving health and safety of children. If the school is not operating without adequately zoning permits and an environment not conducive to a health and safety educational experience, then the prerogative to be maybe the school should be, well, 
the ability of CC to negotiate a process that's going to be done in operation for LAUSD in cooperation with LAUSD. Okay? okay? We also, during that meeting at Bill for Land Use, we also had in attendance was the, the was, um, was represented to the council of Wezar, who, who said that they were, who were behind, they needed, were behind helping to get this, uh, the documentation of the building safely. So, that's where we're at in this meeting. I'm going to ask at this point that, that Gabriella will take over for time in the meeting so I can kind of speak more freely and come to back out. I think the first thing is that I think I'm going to have a board member and I'm going to that. Dark, you're going to be presiding officer for the moment. Okay. Um, I just, I just rather okay. have that change in my head. Okay. I, I, I find that agreeable. Okay. So, in the interest of speaking freely on this issue, the paramount concern that was expressed to Julio Espera at the at the land use committee was that you have a school that's operating out of compliance with zoning, zoning regulations. There is no paperwork on file that the, the school had made any attempts or LAUSD made any attempts to get a zoning to, to establish a zoning jurisdiction over a property. Okay? So, each of these, in the interest of this, in the belief in the interest of this committee, it's my opinion that this committee to should adopt the following resolution that came out of the Land Use Committee, and which I will read for the record here. Okay. You know, when we had that Land Use Committee meeting last Thursday, and actually Wednesday too, because Wednesday we had a meeting over at the at the, what do you call it, the Sacred Heart High School, and at that time uh, they had brought up the master plan uh, for the uh, master plan to taken from uh, the USC, and right here, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, tonight, uh, this is the master plan information. George, we're up. George, I have to make a, a point of order here that this is not on agenda right now. No, so I would ask, I would, at the point of order, I would ask that we just call discussion this issue. There is an issue pertaining on the agenda that was posted regarding a possible USC town hall and education initiative. In that time period, I think we can discuss it then, but in the interest of sticking to the agenda, this is a non-agenda item, and we probably cannot discuss it. If anything, we can discuss during board member announcements, but this is not an agenda item. Okay. And it's not related to the subject at hand? No. It just came out on the line this morning. The, the, and this, the, um, this, this letter that you're presenting as uh, recommendation is from him? The Department of Building and Safety. Is there a public comment, please? I think I could. We could go ahead and um, before we discuss the motion at hand, you could go ahead and take public comment. I will defer uh, to the society officer to take any public comment at this time on this issue, on this agenda item. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, more than a comment, it's a question. I know this item was brought up to the land use um, committee, and they wrote up a, a motion already that could have been presented to the executive committee. I'm just um, curious how. Um, why is it that this committee is also revisiting that item? I know this is an effort, so I thought one motion would be sufficient. Right. Um, if I may um, comment on three in response to the question. Okay. With a comment. Well, it's, it's okay, um, yeah, it's, it's comment. Right. But uh, I, I think any uh, actually this week, I guess, um, take any more comments, public comments. Okay. I could go ahead and just to the meeting that keeps me everyone in and thank you for my 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 uh Can you respond to her comment? No. Right. Oh okay. well, no, that's fine. Well actually it's um Scott, I would advise you not to because this is public comment. Now just for the sake of the public comment on the agenda item we can respond generally 
before we make a decision. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so I'm just making a suggestion. Right. So, and in response, the, the meeting was held a joint effort between the land use and education committee. So both committees should have the prerogative to equally review and and equally determine the 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 progression of uh, this. Mm -hmm. uh, my recommendation is to this body. Does it mean that? Does it mean that? Okay. My, my recommendation to this body is to move forward with the following motion as that's it by the land use committee. That the LA thirty two neighborhood council formally formally draft a formally draft a formal correspondence to City fourteen City Council in Jose Weezer, the Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety the Los Angeles Student Board of Director and, and his office of the Internal Inspector General mm -hmm. requesting it's an great. investigation pertaining to possible zoning violations regarding the Academia Salida Del Pueblo Charter School located at located at 4990 and 4970 on To the following people, okay. Councilman, City Councilman Jose Weezer, the Department of Building and Safety, the Los Angeles Unified School District Board of Education, and its Office of Inspector General. Regarding the school locations, just for the record, for 4990 Honey Tent and 4970 Honey Tent. The 4990 and 4970 Honey Tent. That the motion be to incorporate that, that language as 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 that was approved by the language committee. So I'm being formally requesting a, a second for the motion. Good. Can I open this question? Uh, second. Can I put it right. Okay. right. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Well, we have something to comment on. We already had a public comment on this. Well, this, this is a motion, right? Yeah, well, yeah. I'm going to say that. You can discuss the it. It has to be brought into this and they have to be notified about this. If they attend, if it comes to me, you better yourself. You have to be aware of this because it's being done behind their back, I feel. It's not fair for them to be unaware of what we propose to the police are and whatever else. I mean, it's only fair that they, they, they didn't also. But I'm saying, because it's, it's, it's parents and people in the different community who attend that school, who have to attend that school, they have a right to know. I don't think it's, um... Any other public comments? I don't think it's, um... You know, I, I don't think it's a big secret that people are questioning the zoning. Well, I'm saying, the, the decision there should be uh, aware of it. So that they know they could attend this meeting, the DNC meeting, and, and, and read it. But I'm saying, you could point to that. They might not apply that. But they said it's fair. Otherwise, it doesn't look bad. You know what I mean? Are the, are the agendas made public? Mm -hmm. okay. I'd okay. like to make a point. If he's friendly, saying maybe. it's not public comment, he has the right to say that. We are in discussion, and he is discussing a point, a valid point, whether you agree with him or not, is irrelevant. Well, he has a right to say that. To be within right. It is. It is. He is addressing this, okay, and he yeah. has the right to discuss it. All I'm saying is make it fair. Let them know that they don't come back at you and say something about how it's being done. Okay. Uh, yeah, do you have any comments on that? 
And I have a question for you. Um, um, yeah. It's a technical question. Yeah, to answer it. If the motion is not on this agenda, can we um, make that, that motion be made right now and discuss that? Agenda. The motion was made and it was seconded by George. Yeah, but because it's not, it's not on the agenda, I'm not seeing if we can do any effort now at this time. We can discuss it. Okay. But if you could make any motion you want to in the committee meeting, even if it's not on the agenda. Only they can make the motions and yes. only they can second them. Well, but they have to be open to discussion. Yes, yeah. but even if it's not on the agenda. Right. You sure, Charles? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay. I want to make sure. Well, I mean, we're done, we're done with public comment. Is that not board discussion? Okay. Those recommendations have to be on the minutes. Okay. Everything that he said has to be on the minutes. Chavez, and then if you Chavez. approve that, what Chavez. he recommended, Chavez. it has to. Uh, I think Ms. Ms. Gonzalez here stated uh, that her disclosure regarding the documentation of the minutes, okay? Um, minutes are approved at the next meeting, so the next meeting when they're scheduled to be approved. So at that time period, if you wish to come back and have any comments for the record on the agenda item, then we can do it at that, at that time period. Okay? But you should be correct okay. now as you're doing it and not be out of order, but you're being out of order and you're expecting next meeting. To correct it Mr. when Thomas. our wire like you're not going to be here. I'll be here. I'll be here. I'll be here. Mr. Thomas. Okay. I'm sure. Okay. The discussion right now is among the board. Okay. Yes. Okay. You're not a board member. Respect the fact. I'm not a committee member. I am a board member. No. No, Mr. Chavez. It's a committee. When I go to a committee, I present myself as a stakeholder. I don't expect any special privilege to be granted me just because I'm a board member. When I go to committee meeting. I, I feel I'm the same as any stakeholder in the meeting. Okay? You can't correct that, it. That, but that's the prerogative for the person. We okay? have six board members here Mr. in the serial meeting. Okay, Mr. Chavez, I'm please. I'm correcting it. It's the legality of it. Okay. We have yes, six board we're, members we're, we're, here. Okay, okay. 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 Yeah. okay. 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 In regards to the comments made, the, the agenda said review and... And a, a resolution approving report. Okay, approving means we're going to be approving in a formal manner. I'm so approving the report that was made and forwarding it to the commission. Okay, so I think if they, most people who will read that item will come away with the the opinion that there's going to be some sort of a approval process and report that was submitted to the board. Okay, and then forward that, and then that will be forwarded to the executive committee. Okay, whether it's motion, report, um, resolution, it does say there that we are approving a report being made. So there is going to be some sort of formal process involved here tonight approving the report that was presented. Okay, that you can see does, I would say that the quality motion will suffice pending the information that was, that was, would suffice pending the information that was given to the board members here and, and discussed. Earlier this evening. Scott, I need you to please repeat your motion okay. because I want to be very clear as to what it is that you want us to do. And, okay. I, and don't don't get too worried on me. Because right now at this point, it's, I, I am, from what I understand is that you're requesting that a letter be generated to approve the report from LACWC. Okay. I will, let me yep. go ahead and read this again. Let me read this again. This is we already got a second on this, and I'll read this again yes. for record. Okay. That the LA32NC Neighborhood Council commission a formal correspondence. Hold on, so have LA32NC. You're here. You're here. You're here. You're here. You're here. You're here. Correspondence to the correspondence request to City Councilman Jose Weaver. 
But uh, I will send an invitation to her. She did a presentation at a Naval Watch meeting I was at. And that's been a presentation. I believe she's done El Camino Middle School before, too, in the past. Well, we can talk, we can talk about the issue at hand, but in terms of following through and actually setting up the process, I would still be in that part. But just to give background, so I can go ahead and set up a presentation for the next meeting in lieu that a resolution of our outstanding suspicions by then. So I will go ahead and set up a formal discussion and presentation on this for the uh, February meeting on the third Monday of the month. Okay, here at here or maybe at another location that warrants a larger capacity venue. Okay? When you're at the uh, coal yard, it's indoors, whether it's hot or cold, it's safer for everybody, keeping them from getting sick and being out here. Here you have to buy the coffee, you have to buy the, well, the bread. Come to the entrance of time, I don't want to cut you off, but we have another meeting scheduled to start at 10 minutes. So um, I'll take those comments into consideration, and then we'll go from there. Um, moving on to agenda item number eight, which is what's on the posted agenda, the legal, legally posted agenda, with the discussion uh, possibility of setting up a town hall meeting regarding the new USC initiative on education for six to twelfth graders within the LA 32 area. If um, Mr. Cabrera, uh, if you have some handouts here regarding the master plan regarding USC, and you can go ahead and pass it up, but I'm going to, for the sake of time, I'm going to roll through these comments real quick. One of the things that USC um, presented as part of their outreach to the community was a plan to incorporate a program where students starting in sixth grade and with work with a USC program and under some condition and if they follow through all those conditions by the time they graduate under 12, you know, as seniors, then they would be the recipient of a tuition free, um, tuition free uh, enrollment at USC. Okay. I have talked to uh, one of the community representatives, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Sanchez, and they and if we wanted to, and if we use a large venue, do a formal presentation, especially maybe centering at, at El Serino Middle School, because this whole process will start during the middle school year for the students who would be involved in this project. And so that way, it's an inclusive community event. So not only are we talking about students who are already starting their middle school career, but also potentially students who are moving up to primary schools to see what this program is about and, and, and get some information so they may become, become part of this program in the years, years to come as we're going to 6 to 12. So I can give you some information. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter is in that program. So far so good. So far so good. We do provide a profound amount of parent education and support. Uh, the first round of uh, uh, Saturday Academy started this past Saturday. Uh, the classes are at the Health Science Campus here. And they have not only students from up to middle school, but they also have sixth grade, the sixth grade class over from Merchant. And it's not only up to middle school, but it's a project for the students. Yeah, Merchant. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they, 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 they say that. Um, the graduation, the high school graduation rate for the students uh, from that program, and that program has been going on since like the early 90s, is at 99%, 99% high school uh, graduation rate. Yeah, and I think it's at 75% college graduation rate, which is really high. So in all of them, and about 30%, 30, 30, 30, 35% of the students that go through the NAI program, which is the Nina Academy, initiative program, Third, about 30% of those students that graduated within that program go on to take on the school scholarship that is used. Who funds that? Hmm? Who funds that program? Oh, the big ones that is seen. All the alums. Time and money. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm so far so good. Really? But now my, the, the proof is in the pudding. I have to take it. It's going to take 
Okay, we have five minutes, so um, welcome. I think I'll think probably read the, the purpose of having the formal presentation. So that's why I just wanted to throw this out there so we get the ball rolling on this. So what I want to ask is see if we can get a USC representative to come to our next meeting. They can give us a little informal presentation and then we can build up and do a bigger presentation in the hall. Okay. 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 I can request that some to access the uh, Okay. You can move forward and I'll just give another get to the board. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Number nine, board member announcements. Uh, Mr. Cabrera. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to let the uh, board and also the meeting members know that our uh, newspaper, the Community Beacon, has been expanded now. Uh, we had originally the first two issues, we have uh, 12 pages. It's been expanded now to 16 pages, uh, consisting of seven full pages of advertising and nine pages of, of uh, text. And it includes a calendar of events. Um, the, uh, what do you call it, uh, stories, articles, events are uh, occurring both in our communities in El Torino and uh, Lincoln Heights, and the issue will be available uh, next week, on the first, uh, first week of February, and it will be considered our Valentine's issue. And uh, that issue, we're going to also have what we call uh, Valentine's messages. As a matter of fact, one of them is from the middle of Ruben, uh, over here, right Ruben? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's going to be a very, very interesting uh, issue. Uh, there, there are a lot of uh, uh, events that are going on in our community, both the uh, House Green and Lincoln Heights. And I would uh, highly recommend to the board and also to the community, uh, the business directory, to uh, start, yeah, I know, uh, we could, uh, start utilizing uh, those businesses that patronize and support our new Okay. Gabby? No. Okay. Uh, just one other follow up comment. Um, the issue that was passed here tonight, the motion, what we'll do is we'll make sure that that will be presented for inclusion on the next agenda to the executive committee meeting on Wednesday night this week. So if you have any comments in that time period, you're more free to go to the executive committee meeting this Wednesday. And I believe at Mario Action. Okay. And then uh, we'll that'll be at 6 p.m. Okay. So this, at this point, that's my, my only only announcement. Um, I have a most, I would like at this time period, it's um, 650, uh, 668. I'd like to get a most, get a second on a motion to adjourn the meeting. Okay. At this time period, all in favor of adjourning today, the June, January 27th meeting of the Education Committee, please be by and raise your hand. Opposed? Attention. This meeting is formally adjourned at 6 58 p.m. Thank you very much for your attendance and seat. You need to put on the minute when you took over as uh, chair and when, when you passed it over to, to you. Yeah, we'll, make, we'll incorporate that. <laughs>